Most triggers have the same customization options. So let's walk you through the common ones first. The trigger rule is where you select the channels and the audience. Just check the boxes for the channels you want your workflow to fire on. If you're missing any channels, look for these install links, which will help you set them up. Next, let's look at the audience setting. First, you can choose whether it should appear to users, visitors, or leads, or a combination of all three. Or we can be more targeted here by adding an audience rule, filtering for customers on our pro plan, for example, to create a workflow personalized to our most important users. Okay, let's move on to frequency and scheduling. These options let you determine exactly when you want your workflow to fire. It's easy to run experiments and test your workflows by scheduling a date for them to start and to stop. But most workflows will run all the time, so let's leave these for now. The final option here allows you to set the days and times your workflow can send. Most of your workflows should send all day every day. However, you can set custom times or use office hours to schedule them. One thing to note with office hours is that you'll need to configure them for your workspace before this setting works how you'd expect. Lastly then, you have the option to give your workflow a goal. This allows you to select any piece of data you have in Intercom and track how your workflow impacts it over time. Okay, so these are the most common trigger settings you'll see, but there are a few other options you'll see depending on the trigger. Let's take a look at these three triggers to help explain. So these two are quite similar. They have an extra field which allows you to change the overall behavior of the trigger. In this one, you can specify the exact length of time a customer should be unresponsive for before the workflow fires. Or in this one, you can choose whether you want the trigger to fire when a conversation is open, snoozed, or closed. You'll also note that both of these allow you to choose from a range of channels. But if we compare this to the third trigger, we can see that there are no channel options to choose from. This is just due to the nature of a trigger as it requires someone to select an element on your site to launch from. So it's only gonna work on web, and that's why you don't get the option to choose any other channels. Most triggers are configured in the same way, but make sure you double check your settings before going live.